it's the suddenness of the NFL playoffs and when you lose that really hit you. The build up to the game last week was amazing. What the fans did, amazing. The drive through rally all afternoon long on Saturday, over 4,000 cars driving down and around First Energy Stadium. The send off to Kansas City, the welcome home from Kansas City, it's amazing. But when you <laughs> lose, it's over. That's it. There's no game three or game seven that you get ready for. So that's what hits me, the suddenness of it. And I guess the more you look back at it, boy, you're five points down. You get the ball after the interception. Eight minutes left to go. You get it. You're playing really well at that time offensively for the first time of the game. And they could not get it done offensively. And then defensively, they couldn't get it done to get the ball back. Right. From that uh, Carl Joseph interception, there was probably one play the Browns made on offense or defense. It was Miles Garrett's sack, you know, uh, of Chad Haney, which set up his third and 14. Yeah. Set up third but, and 14. They, you're running this incredible high all, all week long last week on the heels of making it to the playoffs, then beating the Steelers at Heinz Field. And then Patrick Mahomes is out of the game and everything had gone wrong. Before that, yeah. okay, the Higgins fumble, and then it, you, I, I have to tell you, when he went out of the game and when Joseph intercepted that pass, I said, they are going to win. They're going to win this game. In the place the way you need them to go, but uh, it was a woulda, coulda, I don't think the shoulda was there because, <laughs> you know, uh, they're a good football team, but when they put Mahomes out of the game, then all of a sudden, but then, then you get the, you don't get the targeting call on uh uh, Richard Higgins, Higgins. on Sorensen, yeah. Yeah, on Sorensen, which, you know, really would have made a big difference in, in that football game. So that was a huge swing in emotion, there's no doubt, and, and, a, and momentum in the game. The fact that they looked at the play, and obviously they see targeting. I mean, you, they, you really have to be blind not to see right. what went on there. But they can't do anything about it because they didn't call it on the field. So on both points, where well, are you? Well, you know, the fumble rule goes back to the Holy Roller, the 1978 uh, Oakland Raiders game, where, where uh, it, it, it wants to take away the incentive to fumble on purpose. You know, you're, you're a yard short. You know you're not going to make it, so you accidentally fumble the ball in the end zone. I understand the logic of the rule. The rule that you can't review that penalty needs to be changed in my opinion because well, what about the other rule that it goes uh, yeah, yeah the touchback. fumble rule do you have any problem with that now you're rewarding a team that they don't even recover the ball yeah yeah but you also don't want teams to fumble on purpose okay but wouldn't you also couldn't you um in the in the in looking at it couldn't you see intent no i i, I don't think you should uh uh it shouldn't be a judgment. You shouldn't, call. yeah, okay. Just like a, you graze a, a quarterback's helmet. I didn't mean to do it, but you did. It. It's a penalty. Okay. So they wanted to eliminate that portion of it. I really don't have a problem with that. It's the first time I can remember the Browns being victim of it. But not to be able to review a dangerous play yeah. in the ear hole, the crown of the helmet to the ear hole. That was worse than the play on Mahomes that everyone oh, was upset about. That every, well, certainly uh, Kelsey and the rest of the, and Patrick Mahomes' mom and, and people within the uh, Chiefs organization, and Kelsey was really trying to get something going after the yeah. after that play. That's a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. Well, as much as the NFL has gotten into the Absolutely. I am surprised they don't have something in place right now where if they get, see a hit like that and, you know, the official, obviously the officials that's standing right there is trying to see if the ball goes in the end zone or if, the uh, he, you know, he got it across the plane where he fumbled. He's not watching the hit. Right. It's the back judge that should have should have caught it and, you know, throwing the flag. Yeah. Um the NFL and replay, they really still have some holes in their replay. Yes. Is it, do they not want to say, well, I mean, we're going to follow the college game? Is it that, is it, are they so it, haughty that yeah. they might say, you know what, we don't want to follow the college we game? We don't want to slow the game down. But, but it takes them a while to uh, uh, accept the fact that other leagues do things better. Yeah. And, the, and they have copied colleges. Well, at about 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon, I needed the, for them to come to the determination <laughs> that the college game is pretty good. Let's go to that rule. Yeah. I mean, how hard is it to have some, you know, you know the, the guy in New York was watching it and saying, oh my gosh, that's... It's a targeting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's targeting and I can't, I can't do anything about my it. My hands are tied. I can't do anything. <laughs> All right. And it's a safety thing also. Let, in, in a league that is so consumed with safety and yeah. the precautions of that, um, to have that go by so clear um, it was amazing. All right, but let's go to the game, okay? 
Um, they still had their chances. They had their that. chances. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Um, and I think, you know, even they had their chances when it looked like they were getting blown out. I mean, the first drive of the game after they, you know, they give up the six points. Now they can go ahead 7-6, yeah. okay, because they had missed the extra point Kansas City did. And these drives were, you know, they were making mistakes in the drives that yeah, were yeah. really putting them, as you and I talk about many times, behind the chains. Yep. And they were overcoming that on a couple of them. I mean, they came up with a big third down conversion to Hooper. Mayfield ran on a ball uh, and, you know, got a first down. But there were these little things that were happening. Yeah, and uh, it, they were happening all around uh, Baker Mayfield. And then and they really would make a play. And you can't pin it on Mayfield. No, he yeah. would make a play to bail out of them. You know, he made some great throws on third downs to extend drives. After uh, 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 there was a holding penalty, I believe, there was some drop passes. Yeah. Uh, everything, you know, that they didn't do against Pittsburgh, they started doing. I think they only had, what, three or five penalties in the entire game. They The, the penalties didn't put them behind the chain so much. But I think, you know, when you, you look at it, you're trying to throw a swing pass out of the backfield. Who do you want catching it? Do you want Chubb or do you want Kareem? I think Kareem, uh, to me, is more like a Greg Pruitt. That's who I want the ball in his hands. And Chubb, I think, a couple times peaked on him. Yeah, which brings me to this, okay? Um, where was Kareem Hunt in the body of the game until he really got into the game? And when he really got into the game, he really got into the game in the third quarter and ran with fire yeah. and just blasted up the field to get that touchdown to get them right on the doorstep of taking it. Where was he before that? I don't know. I mean, but there was a challenge that they did not get down in time or they didn't go for yeah. that was clear that it was an incomplete pass. Kansas City get up, snap the ball, and then that's over. Yeah. Then there was a challenge that they did chal uh, went went for on a pass to Tyree Kill on Denzel Ward that they challenged and it clearly was a catch. Yeah. And so they lost the timeout there. They they had to use two timeouts in the body of the game, one in mm -hmm. the first half and one in the second half on that possession after the, the interception. And then they wasted Carl one Jones. when they came up to the line of scrimmage. They weren't sure about the play. Yeah, I mean, but they that's just, that hasn't been them all year yeah. long. Well, and, and, you know, on the one that they didn't, they lost the timeout on the challenge. You know, watching the replay monitor, you didn't see... Uh, the, the play on until the first one? yeah until after the play was over you know then yeah. then then it was too late you know the 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 best games the Browns have had this year um, and I'm just thinking of the Tennessee game for one Stefanski always was a step ahead of his coaching counterpart it was the other way around yesterday it seemed like Andy Reid was always a step ahead of Stefanski that first half and uh, the Browns' offense never got into sync. As no, they result. didn't. You're right. They only had three possessions. Fine, but you, you had, they knew every possession they had, they had to score on. I would agree. I, I thought there were pockets in the game where they kind of did get in sync, certainly in the second half when they made the run. But I think there were other times where, you're right, they just didn't feel like they were in sync offensively, and they had bad down and distance. And there were negative running plays yep. that made it second and 12 or something like that. Uh, you know, they had a penalty on Teller. Yep. They had an offensive pass interference penalty on Donovan Peoples-Jones. Yeah. He did push, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. You didn't think so. I I read in your I read <laughs> yeah. in your game story. I thought it was ticky tacky. So. I yeah. mean, the ball was uncatchable, too. Yeah. I thought so, uh, yeah, they, they, the whole first half, uh, then their resilience showed up in the second half to, to, to battle back and get back into that game. But here's the thing, okay, um, third down defensively has been a problem all year long. People have yeah. done very well against them on third down. And imagine a third down and 14 mm. at that stage of the game that really came back and got them. But there were other third downs that they're going to have to get a lot better at that. And they know that. I understand. Yeah. You know, they went offense last offseason. And thank heavens they did because they put together a prolific offense. It probably is only going to get better and better. But now the marching orders are you got to fix that defense. Or if you're going to play at this level, and, and if you're going to play at this level, you're going to bump into this guy and that team for the next few years. And you're going to have to go up against yes. Lamar Jackson. So Chad Henney's going nowhere. Yeah. Josh <laughs> Allen, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> but the, th the thing is, you know, I think, you know, last year when the Chiefs had all the success, everybody just decided we need more speed on defense right. if we're going to play against the Chiefs. Yeah. I think, you know, the message was sent to the Browns. And didn't you think the Chiefs had a lot of speed on defense also? I did. I uh, first of all, that safety, Matthew, the honey badger, oh, yeah. uh, you know, he was all over the field. He was all over the field. Yeah. He was in the backfield. He was in the mm -hmm. second level. He was playing like a linebacker. And, of course, he had the interception, and he almost had another one yeah. when Landry batted that ball up.